Moody's just downgraded the United States from stable to negative based on the risks of the financial and fiscal stability. I mean, think about this. We've just hit an all-time record high of government debt. We're spending over $3 billion a day on interest payments. The fact that the United States got downgraded shouldn't really surprise anybody. But what they didn't do was downgrade the United States from its AAA rating. Now, just back in August, though, Finch did. They downgraded us from a AAA rating to a AA positive. Did that really mean a big difference to the markets? So the markets is watching this because right now, both Finch, remember this has happened in August, right before September's government shutdown. It was one of the main reasons why they did that. Here we are looking down the gun barrel of another government shutdown with a deadline of November 17th. Our government is still at odds. We cannot get to a singular decision. We have a new speaker, Mike Johnson, trying to make a decision happen, but he doesn't even have enough Republicans voting with him. So, in fact, he has to turn to the Democrats. More than likely, we are not going to get an answer, and we're not going to get around a government shutdown. Now, should I be worried about this? I mean, the government shutdown has happened over and over and over again, and inevitably, we always come out just fine. But what we've got going against us this time is the amount of debt racking up and the inability for Congress to come together to make a decision. All of this leading to the downgrade, which in turn leads to higher interest rates. Why? Because a downgrade tells investors that this particular investment, government bonds, is not worth the money. So the prices will have to come down. And what happens is interest rates react opposite and go up. So I want to talk about how this actually impacts the housing market. But before I do, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video because it helps me reach more people just like you. So let's turn our attention to those pesky interest rates, which bounced up near 8%, luckily coming back down to 7.5%. But now they're inching back up again as we're looking at the CPI and the PPI, which is the Consumer Price Index and the Producer Price Index. Data for October. Now, the good news is the WTI, which measures crude oil, was actually down 13% year over year. We also saw rent prices coming down. And remember, that's 40% of the consumer price index. So as we're floating in, going into the consumer price index report, we're hoping to see inflation come down. If it turns and starts to go back up again, that is not good for interest rates. We also know that overall the economy is starting to slow down as consumer spending can't keep up as people are running out of savings accounts and running up their credit card debt, well over $1.02 trillion. So the Fed is watching this, knowing that the economy is starting to slow down. Is it time to stop raising the Fed rate and start dropping it? Well, on that note, economists are split. If you look at the Fed's own dot plot, they show their first Fed cut not happening until the fourth quarter 2024. Goldman Sachs is going to agree with them. They show the first cut in the fourth quarter 2024 and then consecutive cuts every quarter thereafter. Bank of America, meanwhile, shows one more Fed increase with three Fed cuts in 2024. And the market as a whole? has baked in three Fed cuts in 2024. All of that to say, when will interest rates drop? Well, here's the bottom line. The Fed rate does not equal mortgage interest rates. It simply doesn't. The 30-year fixed mortgage rate is tied to the 10-year Treasury yield. The Fed rate is tied to the short-term yields. So what you will see moving the most is the short-term rates, the HELOC rates, the credit card interest rates, the car loan interest rates. Those 10 years are baked more into what's the long-term financial risk, which goes back to the fact that the Moody's just downgraded us from stable to negative. Those 10-year yields will start to come down as soon as we start to feel more stability in our economic market. We also might see the spread between the 10-year Treasury yield and the 30-year fix start to narrow. That could immediately drop the 30-year fixed mortgage rates down by a half a point as much as a point. So what are we watching? 
I mean, while your stomach tries to get unqueasy right now, we're watching whether or not we go into another government shutdown yet again that we will come out of, but at what cost? We're watching inflation to determine whether or not the long-term interest rates will continue their downward trend. We can all be so hopeful as we're also watching an economic slowdown leading towards a recession. All of this continues to support the housing market. Lower interest rates will bring out more buyers, keeping and supporting home prices going upward, supporting the equity that our homeowners have and that our home buyers wish for. All of this as we continue to watch the direction, not only of our interest rates, the 10-year Treasury, and the Federal Reserve. Where do they go from here?